the road to WrestleMania filled in some potholes this week. It's time for the Headlock Headlines. Hello, I'm Marvin, and I'm the Movie Monster. Welcome to episode 9 of the Headlock Headlines here on Toonytown Wrestling. We're not journalists, we don't break news, and we are not a news source. We're just a group of fabricated Americans who like to take a look at the world of wrestling and poke a little fun at it. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all of our new patrons over at patreon.com slash Wrestling. We had over 20 people sign up on the first day alone, and I am honored and humbled by the support. We're debuting all face lock features over there 48 hours before YouTube, and song parodies a full three days before YouTube, along with some exclusive exclusive content that never gets released anywhere else. So there'll also be a song parody coming in the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. Also, apologies to patron Michael Luckett for uh, spelling your name wrong on the last uh, feature video. Alright, please like, share, and subscribe, click the bell icon to get notified of new videos when they drop, and thanks for being a part of the Toonytown family. Alright, time for some news, and I honestly don't even know where to start this week, there's so much to get to. You can start by heaping mountains of praise upon the broad, powerful shoulders of Dinana, Dinana, me. Oh, it looks like our old friend Trip has graced us with his presence. Trip, what are we praising you for exactly this week? The greatest episode of Raw to ever exist, all birthed from the magical mind of the champion content officer of the WWE, aka Dinana, Dinana, me. You're doing the name thing twice in one week, huh? I earned it. Besides, it's an over catchphrase, so I need to give it the old WWE special and run it into the ground. You always say the quiet part out loud. There's nothing quiet with me, Jobber Monster. Well, Trip, I do have to commend you. That was an amazing episode of Raw from top to bottom. Every segment hit for me. The entire show was an emotional roller coaster. The opening segment with Cody and Rock was an excellent use of expectation subversion that served the story. Cody asked the fans to stand with him and fight with him, and it reminded me a lot of his father saying, my hand is touching your hand in the infamous Hard Times promo. Rock saying nothing but an ominous whisper turned the crowd against him and left an unsettling feeling over the entire night. Then you had an excellent promo with Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, and CM Punk. Ah, we pushed the punk button. TK, Tony Khan, wrestling savior, and he's the bomb. Yeah, he's TK, Tony Khan, he's giving wrestlers hugs, and he might be on drugs. Yeah, he's TK. I'm here, don't worry, I've arrived to save you all and provide the safe space you need after the horror show abomination that happened on Monday night. Oh man, what happened Monday night? I think he's talking about Raw. He couldn't be talking about Raw, Raw was good. Yep, and that's why he's upset. Uh, let's hear him out. You're letting random fans give opinions now? Is this some kind of make-a-wish thing? Because if so, I get it, you're doing a good thing. No, Trip. that's Tony Khan, the owner of AEW. He's here every week. He is? Yes! Excuse me, am I being ignored? Yes! No one ignores me! Do you know who my dad is? No. Ugh! All right, Toonie, the floor is yours. What is it you want to say? I just felt the need to come out here to stop this mutual admiration society the two of you have going on here. I don't admire him. Thanks. Someone needs to be there for all the traumatized fans that were so viciously triggered last Monday night by that meanie butt face poop nose bully CM Punk. Tony, what exactly did CM Punk do to trigger you and your fans this time? Were you not listening? First he said that Drew was a man in a skirt and meant it in a negative way. What's that? His cancel pig fans squealing. Don't let them in here. Then, he referenced that homophobic, transphobic, racist, Trump-loving monster, Jim Cornette. I need to stop you right there. Why? I was just getting warmed up. Because my bullcrap and hypocrisy alarms are going off at the same time, and this needs to be addressed. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Yeah, popcorn time. <laughs> when CM Punk was a member of the AEW roster, you all couldn't heap enough praise on him. And at the same time, the WWE fans hated him. Everything from the East Side was all about how Punk was a washed, injury-prone crybaby who buried the entire roster. And to AEW fans, he was a respected legend, the head of the company, the beating heart and soul of AEW. I remember that. <sighs> Those were good times. 
But now that he's in WWE, Trips fans think he's this amazing presence breathing new life into pro wrestling, and your fans think he's the Antichrist, and they go off on long tirades about how he's a washed, injury-prone crybaby. These are good times. I don't get what point you're trying to make here. Yeah, I'm confused too. My point is that this tribalistic feud between WWE and AEW fans is a breeding ground for hypocrisy. It's the ultimate disingenuous argument. It's a bunch of radioactive babies throwing the same tantrum whenever someone switches sides. I don't care for CM Punk. That was my opinion when he was in the WWE the first time, it's my opinion when he was in AEW, and it's my opinion now that he's back in the WWE. But he's bad now! Why? Because he left? Because he slapped your snot-nosed little jobber in the face? Because your EVPs effed around with him and found out the hard way how actual men handle things? But, 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 Cornette! And here's the difference between the two sides. Your side is so steeped in this virtue-signaling nonsense that you craft these narratives to brand people as ists and phobes in the hopes of destroying them. Politics has never and will never have a place on Toonytown Wrestling, but I'm going to slightly break that rule for a quick second to make this point. CM Punk and Jim Cornette are two of the most outspoken liberals in the wrestling world. Cornette especially, so to try to call them Trump lovers is just egregiously false and only serves a narrative that anyone who thinks differently than the one side shouldn't be welcomed in modern society. I don't give the slightest damn who you support politically, but what I do care about is accuracy and the truth. Yeah, Punk said that Drew wore a skirt. Was it cheap heat? Sure. Was it transphobia the way people are carrying on about? No. And it's telling that Punk supporting Cornette is some huge issue, but none of your fans seem to have an issue with FTR being buddies with him. Of course they don't. Why not? Because they're grown men. They can be friends with whoever they want. But Punk is also friendly with Jim. Oh my god! Racism! Homophobia! Transphobia! Look what they're supporting! Jesus, is this what the world is now? Unfortunately, yes. God, no wonder I never leave the WWE bubble. If you think that's bad, Google Gamergate 2 and Sweet Baby Inc. Hold on. Oh. Oh god. This world is broken and can't be fixed! Look, don't blame me because his wrestlers have a history of supporting violent racists! <sighs> don't bring up Brooks Jensen, don't bring up Brooks Jensen, don't bring up Brooks Jensen. Like Brooks Jensen! Ah, oh, son of a bitch! He wore a shirt honoring that racist creep, Ole Anderson, on NXT TV. And the wrestling world rightly chased him off social media for it. I know you agree with me, monster. After all, Brooks Jensen personally attacked you when you got into that Twitter argument with The Rock's daughter. Yes, it's true that Brooks Jensen tried to sick the mob on me when I said I guess charisma isn't hereditary in reference to Ava Rain. And I'll admit, there was a very brief second when that same mob turned on him for wearing a t-shirt where I thought of the old adage, pity not the arsonist who burns in his own flame. But, despite my personal distaste for the guy, I think what happened to him was atrocious and shameful. The guy wore a shirt of a major figure in the history of wrestling. Now, I have no idea if Brooks is an actual fan of Ole Anderson, or if he saw an opportunity to get some cheap babyface heat by wearing a shirt of a man who had just died. But either way, him wearing a shirt was an acknowledgement of Ole Anderson the wrestler, the guy we all saw in front of the camera. I doubt he ever actually met Ole, and he certainly wasn't giving a show of support for Alan Robert Rogowski. Who? That's Ole Anderson's real name. See, even I didn't know that. Exactly, because Ole Anderson was the last person who would have ever let anyone outside the business at the time he was active in on his personal life. The only person we ever knew was the guy in front of the camera. The only thing we know about his life outside of wrestling are second and third hand accounts from other people. Most of those people disliked Ole. The man hated a lot of people and a lot of people hated him right back. Are reports from Teddy Long, Tony Atlas, and Ken Patera accurate? It's definitely possible. But to assume that Brooks Jensen put on a shirt with the intention of supporting some reported racism is ludicrous. It's situations like this where you have to look at the intent behind an action. There are people who commit actual violent racist acts in the world every day, but they're lumped in on the same level as some idiot who wore a t-shirt on a TV show. So Brooks Jensen's intent wasn't to support racism, and CM Punk's intent was not to attack the trans community because he said that a man was wearing a skirt! Sure know an awful lot about men wearing skirts. Don't start that again. I'm just saying the evidence is piling up. 
Speaking of evidence, WWE is finally getting what it deserves. The chickens are coming home to roost. Regarding the heinous allegations of what's been going on behind the scenes with so much so that a local group of concerned, moral, upstanding Baptists are planning to protest outside of an upcoming Raw Live event. This group of noble, morally upstanding heroes goes by the name of the Westboro Baptist Church. Toonie. Holy crap! <laughs> what? Toonie, have you ever actually Googled the Westboro Baptist Church to get a little context on the group and maybe uh, see what it's all about before praising the fact that they're going to be protesting outside a WWE event? Oh, there's no need. If the Westboro Baptist Church is against the WWE, then I have no problem hitching my wagon to this fine group of upstanding individuals. Tooney, I strongly urge you to run a two-second Google search before you continue with this. This is a thing that a lot of your fans have been doing on social media, and I just think that you all don't realize what's happening here, and you- Oh, we know exactly what's happening, monster. A group of honorable, godly citizens are taking a stand against the evil E, and your furry, fed-loving ass can't handle it. I love the Westboro Baptist Church. I believe in the Westboro Baptist Church and all it stands for. AEW supports the Westboro Baptist Church and God hates WWE. Oh boy. Oh man, hold on. This is a two popcorn episode. <laughs> I may even invite them to an AEW show as my special guests. I'd even go as far as to invite them to my dad's businesses. The Westboro Baptist Church and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Westboro Baptist Church and the Fulham FC. Oh no. Yep, and you can deal with it. Guys, can we can we please roll a clip for this idiot? They claim God mostly hates homosexuals, licks Jews, politicians, divorcees, even entire countries. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. It's all right, little buddy. You obviously didn't know, and your intent wasn't to support this kind of thing. And people will totally see and respect that, right? <sighs> I'm sure the world will understand, and... What's that? Hold on. Let me look out the window. Oh, God. So many pitchforks. Are those torches? They got they breached the outer walls! Guys, I gotta go. Godspeed, Tony Khan. Well, that was fun. What's really sad is that this was a real thing that AEW fans were doing last week. The only fictional part was finding out what the Westboro Baptist Church was and changing their tune. Most doubled down and said that it was just proof of how evil WWE is when the Westboro Baptist Church are the good guys. Is it ever hard to write parodies of these people when this is the kind of thing that happens in real life? That is the sad challenge of my life, my friend. Work with Kevin Dunn for 20 years and then talk to me about challenges. Oh, yeah, I have to say that the look and feel of the product has completely changed since he left. We're getting all these new and interesting camera angles presenting the product in an entirely new way. Almost like he was a lazy, bitter, angry, sad sack cuck moron without a shred of talent who set himself on autopilot somewhere around WrestleMania 5 and sat there collecting a paycheck while making everyone around him miserable for decades. Yeah, almost like that. Almost like he was a petulant child who hated professional wrestling more than a cat hates water. A jealous waste of space who only held on to his job because he attached himself like a barnacle to another gross old man without a shred of common decency or joy outside of his work. Yeah. Almost like that. Almost like the product is finally unchanged from the whims of an out-of-touched, beaver-mouthed sloth who sucked the joy and imagination out of everything he touched, because he knew deep down that he had no talent to make it as an actual director and producer in the world of television and movies, so he stayed in a job he hated in a business he despised and collected far more money than he ever should have been given, only to jump ship conveniently right before allegations dropped against a certain someone that he was so closely tied to. I get it. I mean, I've never heard anyone say a kind word about Kevin Dunn. What kind of person do you have to be to be so universally despised? Hi, guys. I think we're about to find out. <sighs> Looks like we're being joined by Dave Schmelzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Son of a bitch. Hey, 
watch your language. What kind of uh, example are you setting for, like, the rest of the WWE roster? Don't you know that, um, uh, you know, like, TKO is being very clear on wanting the entire WWE team to maintain strict uh, PG standards? I'm sorry, is he telling me what TKO wants? That's what it sounds like. Additionally, the uh, TKO board and the WWE roster has been, like, uh, especially upset about the language being used by Dwayne. You know, Dwayne, my good friend Dwayne, who I like to call Dwayne. Uh, you know, he's been uh, cursing, and uh, so that's going to be uh, stopping. Oh, is it now? It uh, sure is. Dave, we heard your report on this, and it was so egregiously false that The Rock actually descended from atop Hollywood Mountain to address your report specifically and call it horse shit. Well, uh, I have better sources than Dwayne. You have better sources about things happening with The Rock than The Rock does? My uh, sources are, you know, like infallible. I don't think you have sources. You know what I think happened, Dave? I think you saw Rock swearing and cooked up a narrative in your ridiculous pea brain and reported it as news like you always do. You, like most of us, believe that a scum-sucking parasite like you would be below the Rock's notice. Well, now, uh, you're just making, uh, assumptions. You're right, Dave. I am. And you know what I'm not doing with these assumptions? I'm not reporting them as facts. I'm using words like, I think, and that's something that you never do. Because your entire business model revolves around you convincing the sheep who read that rag of unintelligible nonsense run-on sentences that you have some kind of insider knowledge. And maybe at one time, you did. Maybe at one time, you had some valid sources in WWE. Sure, people have used you as a means of peddling narratives that serve their own political interests backstage, but some people were likely talking to you. It's now more clear than ever that you have no WWE inside source as you rack up L after L after L. How do you know uh, that what I'm uh, saying here isn't true? Because almost immediately after this report, WWE put out a Raw episode in which multiple people, including your friend CM Punk, cursed. Cody even bled, and when the camera stopped rolling, The Rock broke Shane Douglas's record for most F-bombs dropped at a single wrestling segment. That uh, doesn't, you know, like, prove anything. Then, to cap off your best week ever, your beloved Kenny Omega put out a video criticizing the fact that Kurt Angle was never given a five-star match while insinuating that you now hand out five-star matches like they're candy. Well, uh, like, Kurt Angle is, you know, like, uh, overrated. You gave John Moxley four five-star matches. Are you saying that John Moxley has better matches than Kurt Angle? Yup. Dave... I get that it's your opinion, and that's fine. But where my issue comes from is you always treating your ranking system like it's the be-all, end-all of truth in wrestling quality. It is. It's not. It's your opinion. Your subjective opinion. And that makes it a fact, because sports writers say nice things about me sometimes. Will Osprey has 37 five-star matches, Dave. 37. That's over people like Kurt Angle, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, and every other quality wrestling performer who ever laced a pair of boots. Because Will Ospreay is uh, objectively the greatest like wrestler of all time. No, he's not. Then why does he have all these five-star matches? Ugh. You just hate Will Ospreay because uh, your entire brand is hating on AEW. That's not true in the least bit. I actually like Will Ospreay. I think he's good in the ring. I think he has the swagger of a legitimate star. No, uh, my uh, sources in Toonie Town Wrestling have specifically, uh, you know, like told me that uh, you hate Will Ospreay with the white hot fury of a thousand exploding suns. So you know more about what I think than I do. Is that what you're saying? Just like you know more about what the TKO board thinks than TKO board member The Rock? Yes. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, uh, make logical sense, but, uh, it does make wrestling booking sense. That's what you said last week about the fact that the Blackpool Combat Club aren't in the AEW Tag Title Tournament after beating FTR. I stand by it. How does it make wrestling booking sense, Dave? Because, uh, something about, uh, you know, uh, like with the, yeah, uh, you know, like, uh, all right, great. Thank you for that. So basically we're saying that the AEW ranking system is bullshit and doesn't actually matter despite Tony Soft rebooting it several times now. That's not true at all. I mean, uh, uh, uh. uh that's not true at all. Toonie, we all saw you. Just come back. 
Ugh, why? All right, fine, I'm back. I thought you were being chased down by an angry mob of cancel pigs. I was, but then the WWE had three black women stand next to each other last night, and they've all moved on to that. Wait, why is that a bad thing? Shouldn't that be a good thing based on their logic? Oh, you understand nothing about social justice and virtue signaling, monster. Good. You see, by placing three black women together, WWE has essentially segregated them into a racist, sexist group apart from the rest of the roster. Or, the top three babyfaces on the show were three black women, and they closed SmackDown standing triumphantly together after driving off the top heel group in the entire women's roster. And don't get me started on them putting every Mexican wrestler into the same segment. You mean to promote a super hyped up Lucha Libre tag match in which a man who many say is the greatest luchador of all time will work his ass off to get the Mexican stars of the future onto the next level on the biggest stage of all time? Yes. <sighs> I hate this world. Me too. Now that you're here, Toonie, let's talk about your little war of words with Eric Bischoff after Eric announced that his second podcast, Strictly Business, would be shutting down. Ha! What a loser! Just another show that he's run into the ground. When I was up and wired at 4 a.m. after being awake for three days straight powered by Jeff Hardy's magic snow, I absolutely owned Eric with this classic tweet. I said, sunsetting this fraud of a podcast before the next AEW media deal is a wise choice. Yes, and then Eric quickly fired back by announcing his new show, Wise Choices, a live streaming YouTube show that was suddenly a lot more visible after you decided to spout off at four in the morning. And then he went live and savagely dunked on you for over an hour. He criticizes me all the time! Yes, but he is not the head of a major wrestling company anymore. He's a podcaster now, and his job is to talk about modern wrestling. You, as the head of the second largest pro wrestling company on the planet, should have a little decorum. The single greatest revenge we can take on our harshest critics is success. But I don't have any of that! Maybe if you focused on improving your product instead of tweeting at critics, you might find some. There's nothing to improve. My product is great! Where the hell did that come from? Jim Cornette. The only reason my product suffers is because of jealous losers like Eric Bischoff. Tony, would it kill you to have a sense of humor about your product? Yes. Look at Will Osprey. I do, every night before I go to bed. Alright, what I mean was that a Twitter X user named Alfred Kanua posted this spoof of Will. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Osprey! Thank you, Tony! Take the piss off it, bruv! The terrorist should have got a brother! Blaine Daniels didn't wake up, bruv! And it could have been a terrorist! Tiger Driver 91 with the lions and bears and elephants! Freddie Mercury, bruv! The terrorist should have been a terrorist! It's a big day, bruv! Manchester United to buy a terrorist in it, bruv! In it! It most certainly is. Is it? Last night's promo, you know, I mean, you know, last night's promo with Will Ospreay it was just, I mean, you know, I, to put it this way, it was just, it was just out of this world. What? This is an outrage. I'm sure Will cooked him good for that. Actually, Will laughed and praised the joke, complimenting Alfred on it. But he made a joke about him. Why didn't he call him a loser and wish cancer on his dog? Because Will is an adult man with a sense of humor. Because he's confident in his abilities and doesn't feel the need to defend himself endlessly to feed his own deep-seated insecurities. No, the issue is that Will obviously didn't know he was talking about him. He obviously thought this guy was talking about Wade Barrett. Yes, that's clearly the problem here. But I'm afraid I got some bad news. We're gonna shift gears to talk about your ranking system. Do we have to? Yes, in a world in which wins and losses matter, how is it that the BCC aren't in your tournament after beating FTR, yet FTR is in the tournament? You just don't understand statistics. Explain it to me. No. And how does it make sense that Kostrika Okada's first singles match in AEW was a title match against Eddie Kingston for a championship? Well, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Explain it to me. No. Tooney, just admit that statistics in a scripted wrestling show is a stupid idea. If someone suddenly blows up in popularity, you're not going to deny them a main event feud because of their spot in the rankings. Admit that it's too overly complicated when you're also dealing with storylines, new signings, and the will of the people. No. Tony, it's not working. You touted this so much in the beginning, but it's failed time and time again. It hinders you creatively, because if you have to be a slave to the rankings, your hands are tied on storylines. And when you ignore it for the sake of a storyline, then everyone dunks on you. 
You just don't understand sports-based wrestling. I'm doing something new and innovative. That's why so many people are comparing me to Paul Heyman lately. Who? Who is comparing you to Paul Heyman? Me, just now. And let's not forget, my Jim Ross once compared me to Cowboy Bill Watts. Yes, that is an actual thing that came out of his mouth. I mean, look at our side-by-side -side comparison. From our no-nonsense attitude toward talent relations to our rugged toughness and emphasis on realism in wrestling, we're essentially the same person. And I'm sure if you asked the cowboy, he'd say that we're kindred spirits, brothers in arms. I'm more like his son than Eric Watts ever was. Let's circle back to the Paul Heyman thing, because outside of lying, you have nothing in common with Paul Heyman. But a certain someone actually did draw something of a comparison between you and Paul recently. See, I told you! What well-respected, honorable, intelligent, and completely relevant legend did this? Eric Bischoff. Crap! Eric noted that there's a lot you can learn from someone like Paul Heyman. On his podcast, 83 Weeks, Eric said, Paul, rather than come out and say, I'm going to be bigger than the WWE, or I'm going to be bigger than WCW, he didn't do that. He went in the opposite direction. Lesson to be learned, Tony Khan. Embrace being the underdog. Quit taking shots at the big dog in the neighborhood, because you're never going to beat the big dog. But if you embrace the fact that you're an underdog, people will support you because of that. And you won't create this tribalism that everybody's talking about. It was really created by Tony Khan, and a lot of the talent on the roster who were constantly taking shots at WWE. They created the tribalism and haven't been able to deliver and become more successful and actually become a legitimate challenger. Then I think people would have gotten on board with the idea, but obviously they haven't. And I think there's a real obvious lesson to learn by what Paul did by embracing the underdog status. Well, that's just ridiculous. We're not the underdog. We run in 18,000 seat arenas every week. And you draw anywhere between three and 5,000 people to them on average. That's besides the point. I don't know, I think that is the point. You shut up! You're the one who created this tribalism! You're the one who did it! You, not me! I'm a sweet, angelic little cinnamon bun who has never and will never do anything wrong! Pretty sure you came out of the gate swinging at us, along with the thing that I picked my teeth with for most of the early 2000s, bragging about demos and how you were going to beat Raw in the ratings. I don't remember that. Then, anytime we hit you back, you run and cry to your sock puppet journalist friends about how the big bad company is picking on you, while at the same time bragging that you have more money. But, but, but Vince! Is gone. Nice try. You use this political messaging propaganda tactic of claiming that WWE broke the pro wrestling business and that only you could fix it. Now, your audience will go to any length to defend you. They threaten people. They try to ruin the lives of anyone who remotely criticizes you and embrace hate groups like the Westboro Baptist Church as long as they shine a negative spotlight on WWE. Yeah, but you... Nope. Let me tell you about you. You're the spoiled child who used to weasel his way backstage every time WWE came to Jacksonville, all because of who your daddy was. And you'd slither in with presents for all the wrestlers and follow them around like a puppy. Then, at the first chance you got, you turned the entire professional wrestling world into a hate-filled, tribalistic war field. Well, you're bald. If I can interject here, you're nothing but a tweaked out little weirdo wannabe. And you're just a mid-card guy who made the right friends and knew when it was time to marry the boss's daughter. At least I've known the touch of a woman, guys. Oh, please. You call China a woman? Touch grass, you pathetic loser incel. Well, that'd get you canceled if your fans weren't hypocrites. Why don't you go ask your daddy to buy you a better comeback? I'd tell you to go ask your father-in-law, but you're too busy looking the other way. Don't make me break out the big guns. Dork. Jackass. Daddy's boy. Steffi's boy. All right, that's it. But 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 AEW. But 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 WWE. Play it. I look and see it's not just me. Ah, what devilry is this? So many others have stood where I stand. <laughs> it we burns my young, ears. So it burns my brain. Young. They call us problem child. We spent a life so Make it stop. Make it stop. You've gone wild. We stand and we won't fall. Run right away. One, one for all. The writing's on the wall. We are the youth. Sean, Sean, we have to evacuate. Wild. Yeah. Ah, sorry I had to make you sit through that, folks. But desperate times call for desperate measures. Thanks for tuning in. We had a lot more to cover this week that we didn't get to, including AEW and Raw's ratings and the Jack Perry and MJF totally real and not at all work situations going on, but we ran out of time. We'll cover them next week. 
Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out the Tony Town Patreon at patreon.com slash Wrestling for early access to face lock features and song parodies, along with some exclusive content. We're going to be posting a new song parody up there this week, three days before it goes up on YouTube, and here's a little preview of that. <laughs> Thanks for all the support. Make sure you tune in for Toonie Talk Wrestling on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Please like, share, and subscribe. Click the little bell icon to get notified of new videos as they drop. For Toonie Khan, Dave Schmelzer, and Trip, I'm Marvin the Movie Monster. Now get out of here!